What's up, idols? It's CC Lesson 3. Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video. So for today, this is a topic I've been wanting to talk about for a really long time because of the type of DMs and messages I get. There's a lot of girls who ask me what it's like to be a foreigner dating in Korea, what it's like to be a woman in Korea, what's like to be a foreign woman in Korea, especially with the How You Wave creating so much curiosity and interest in Korea. Korea is now officially on the map. They're growing their cultural impact around the world. For example, skincare, Korean food, movies, music, K-pop, fashion, the goods they export, like Kia, Samsung, BTS. <laughs> By now, we've all heard the stories about what it's like to be a foreigner dating in Korea, the good and the bad. The hookup culture, being in relationships, the gender issues, cheating, ghosting. There's a lot of issues facing Korea right now and their future. Some are uniquely Korean and some are more common and like a lot of places in the world are experiencing these same issues. Fewer traditional marriages, yet an increase in interracial marriages. So with that, let's talk about sex, gender, and love culture in South Korea. One thing that South Korea has in common with much of like the Western world, and I, I, I say Western world because that's where I'm from, that's where I grew up, I can't speak for nations and people I'm not familiar with. So I say Western a lot because I'm American. I have a lot of Western friends, Western values, Western ideals. Yeah. Like I said, in South Korea, along with a lot of the Western world, there's been this growing sex positivity mindset. But one of the main differences I feel with the rest of the world versus like Korea is despite the people being more open-minded and liberated sexually, a lot of the media and the policies and the laws make Korea appear to be very conservative still, and they're not. <laughs> they still project this innocent, wholesome, conservative image. On TV, when you watch like K-pop comeback stages, anything even remotely sexual gets banned, especially for female artists and female celebrities. Even in K-dramas, you'll see people in like their 40s and 50s shyly kissing the other person, being nervous around the opposite gen. Like, it's so strange that someone that old would be all innocent and cause that's just the image they put out there. Socially and on television, these topics are very like taboo and not talked about. We don't talk about it, shut up, shut the fuck up. I feel like that leads to some of the problems you're seeing in Korea right now where people gotta be sneaky to do this stuff. In reality, some of the most perverted, freaky, and bluntly sexual things I've ever heard have been from Korean men. They even proudly call themselves perverts like it's a badge of honor. Introvert? Nah. Extrovert? Nah. Ambivert? No. I'm a pervert. There's a reason so many foreign girls have very similar experiences when they talk about what happened to them when they dated in Korea. Even Korean girls can relate. Another thing. I tend to speak more on like women's issues, women's views, because I am one. I can't speak for men. I'm not a dude. And I don't know that many. So. If you're a guy watching, please enlighten us in the comments, correct me where I'm wrong, because I know I'm not 100% right, but I'm just speaking from what I know from myself, my friends, what I've heard, what I've seen. In Korea, they gotta resort to hooking up in DVD bongs, going to a love motel for like an hour. They go clubbing looking for booty just like the rest of us. Hookup culture is alive and well in South Korea. There's a lot of sexuals going on. <laughs> but I feel like because of the image that's put out there in South Korean media, a lot of foreigners are caught off guard by that and they're surprised when they see what they do and hear what they say. They're like, wait, I thought you were like this handsome, innocent, sweet prince. Nah, bitch, I'm a frog. Things like for example, are very illegal in South Korea, but it's kind of like tattoos. Tattoos aren't illegal in Korea, but they're only supposed to be done by licensed medical like doctors and shit, but like 90% of tattoo parlors are not done by people who have the license and right to do so. It's kind of like that with them. Um, there's also a lot of like those karaoke entertainment places where like a pretty girl will drink with you and you can negotiate what happens after later. Things like for example are illegal in South Korea but a lot of people use VPNs to watch anyway. I say all this to say you can see a lot of Korea's traditional views disappearing in the rearview mirror. So when you go to South Korea and if you decide to date, expect whatever behavior you've experienced in your own home country. Korean men and women are no different from the rest of us. Cheating or loving, honest or lying, ghosting or being consistent, all that. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> and of course it's absolutely possible to find a normal person to date, marry, settle down with in South Korea. It is a little bit less likely if you are a foreigner. So next, why don't we talk about that? The differences between interracial Korean couples and traditional Korean couples. Don't ask me why, but interracial marriages and relationships and couples with an Asian woman and a foreign male are way more likely than an Asian man and a foreign woman. Don't ask me why, those are the facts and stats. Google it if you don't believe me. I feel like that combined with the fact that you often hear Korean guys say like foreign girls are fun and open-minded. Foreigners are 
not taken as seriously as like long-term partners in South Korea. Not to say that's how all men feel, but traditionally you'll see foreign girls being short-term situationships and relationships. Again, not to say it's not possible to find actual love in South Korea. We've heard the stories on this channel where despite the odds and the language barriers and the cultural barriers, it happens and they make it work. I know a few foreign girls who are happily married to their Korean husbands. It's just a little less likely. There's a lot working against you. There's older family members pushing their views on their kids, language barriers like I said, distance and cultural barriers. They're much more likely to stick with a Korean partner if not for the sake of simplicity but also for the sake of their family. But as I alluded to in the intro of this video, all of that is changing. Did you know that in 2023, marriages in Korea finally started to uptick a little bit? But it's not for the reason you think. Year after year, South Korea has seen a steady decline of marriages. In 2023, it ticked up a little bit because there was an increase in foreigners and Koreans getting married to each other. According to the Korean Herald, one in 10 couples who tied the knot in Korea last year included a partner of a foreign nationality. So it does seem like foreign marriages and interracial marriages are being more accepted. You know, a lot of younger people are choosing to be single. They're choosing to not get married. They're choosing to not have kids. They have one of the world's lowest birth rates. They also have one of the highest, if not the highest, gender wage gaps of any developed OECD nation. First, we should start with like the traditional beliefs and the traditional conservative values and how the impact and influence of these traditional beliefs are waning and declining with younger people. Neo-Confucianism runs deep in South Korea. Sex is purely for starting families and procreation. You shouldn't do anything before you're married. Woman raises baby and tends to the home. Men goes out, makes the money and works. Sounds pretty similar to a lot of Western traditional family roles, right? Try a wife. But Korean housewives are expected to do a little bit more. They're also expected to move in with their husband's family and take care of his family. And that often includes her in-laws, his parents. What do you mean? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Have you guys ever heard of chip saram? That means a house person or a home person. That's basically what a Korean wife is supposed to be. I remember in summer of 2022 when I was in Jeju hanging out with my girl Bria all summer. She came home one day telling me about this incident with a coworker. Like she had a coworker that was really stressed and really overwhelmed and just needed to vent. And she was telling me about this. Her coworker was a young mom and a very recently married woman. She's expected to still have her job at the school with Bria and work, take care of their child, cook, look after his parents, clean, and be an attentive wife to her husband. Oh, How to way. take a few steps back. Bria felt bad for this girl because she's like, yo, you have no free time. She was always trying to hang out with her. So there's like this clash of like what the traditional wife is supposed to do and what a wife needs to do today because with the cost of living going up, oftentimes men and women need to work. Because of things like this, Women aren't, aren't, they don't really fuck with that. They're not cool with that. So you have seen a rise of feminism in South Korea. Now, feminism has been on the rise pretty much worldwide, but one of the major differences between how a lot of the world views feminists versus how Korea views feminists is in Korea, feminists are deeply hated. Don't get me wrong, any weak man anywhere hates feminism because they can't handle a woman challenging them, their roles, their views, their authority. The patriarchy, no challenge to the patriarchy is okay. Any sort of criticism of man is usually viewed as hatred for men. That ain't, that's, that's not, the math ain't mathin'. I mean, you even have the brainwashed pick me girls who are like, feminism is bad for us. But in Korea, it's pretty extreme. Just a real quick definition of feminism, because it's often warped. I think a lot of people really don't know what feminism means. I think the people viewing my channel, I think y'all know what it means because we're, we're on a different level, we're elite. But a lot of people don't know what it means. It is simply the pursuit of equality between men and women. I'm not fair. Political, economic, personal, and social equality. That's feminism. We know men and women are different. Men and women have separate strengths and weaknesses. We complement each other well when it's done correctly. <laughs> and of course there are the extreme man-hating, bra-burning feminists, but there's extremists in any ideology. Like I'm a feminist, right? I love my boyfriend. I don't hate men. I just want women to be respected by men. But in South Korea, <laughs> younger men really don't like feminists. One of their major complaints is how women are exempt from the military, but men aren't. And traditionally it was because women get pregnant and have babies, so they can't serve in the military. And I do agree. I feel like to some degree, women should be required to serve, but hear me out. <laughs> if you're gonna do that, you also gotta pay women equal. Like you, you, have to, you have to be equal on all fronts. Very few men in South Korea actually want to serve. They just do it because they have to, or they'll go to jail. <laughs> and I get locked up, they won't let me out. They won't let me out. And I know that because even as we see like the required term get shorter and shorter, 
the men of older generations who have to do it for longer are bitter as fuck about it. So if you're gonna make women serve in the military, you gotta pay women equally too. You gotta give women equal rights and respect. And even now, you do have women who choose to volunteer and serve their country, and they deal with a lot of sexual abuse because of it. I did a video back in 2022 about this and it was demonetized given the, the nature of it. So it was suppressed by the algorithm, if y'all wanna check that out. The whole gender hostility in South Korea, especially with feminism, is so extreme that if a woman has a short haircut, she can be accused of being a feminist and then get attacked physically for it. Police arrested a man in his 20s who indiscriminately assaulted a woman working at a convenience store for having short hair. The man also punched a man in his 50s who was trying to restrain him. The attacker asked a man why as a male he wasn't helping him. There are even anti-feminist rallies in South Korea. It's so bad <laughs> that a lot of people theorize that even though Barbie was the top grossing movie of 2023 worldwide, it flopped in South Korea because a lot of women feared being labeled a feminist, so they didn't go see it. A lot of Koreans also blame their current demographic and the decline of their people on feminists and like LGBTQ+, which is insane. There are many legitimate factors that lead to people not having kids and choosing to stay single, and it's not feminist and it's not gay people. There's a lot of growing resentment and people deflect the blame. And you even see government initiatives like trying to hire Filipinos to be like nannies for families or trying to incentivize men to have more kids to get them exempt from the mandatory military service. Also encouraging men to reverse their vasectomies, like that's gonna make people have babies again. Notice none of these cater to women and women's needs. <laughs> anyway, enough of that, let's move on to another topic. This is not a really smooth transition, but it's still something we gotta talk about. Crimes in Korea. While it's still safer statistically in Korea, there are still assault crimes, just like anywhere else in the world. One of the many differences though, I think, in Korea versus probably the country you're watching this from now, is the punishment that goes for said crimes. Unfortunately, for some weird reason, many of these crimes result in like a suspended sentence or a fine, maybe some probation or community service. Just like we saw from that old actor in Squid Game. What's crazy is people face more jail time for crimes like smoking weed than rape a woman. I don't wanna be dramatic, but it does seem like crimes against women are less harshly punished for some reason and they're not taken as seriously and it is scary. I really do think all of these issues contribute to their declining birth rate and the growing gender hostility and tension. I think as we continue to see Korea make efforts to project their soft power and expand their influence in the world, we're gonna keep talking about Korea. <laughs> Especially as Korea opens up, welcomes foreigners and tries to compete like on the global stage. They're one of the top economies, they're important allies to a lot of countries in the world, but laws and expectations are still lacking. No place is perfect. I'm American. Trust me, no place is perfect. There's a reason why I spend so little time in America. Before I end this video, I want to offer a disclaimer. Korea is overall a safer country. Just because crime is lower in Korea does not mean we shouldn't talk about that crime. Especially when so many of you guys want to visit, want to move there, want to live there. It's important to talk about. I'll never understand why crimes against women are punished so lightly. And then they wonder why women are upset and not having kids and more women are becoming feminists. Don't expect this perfect utopia, but don't expect hell either. You need to go and experience it for yourself and see how you rate Korea. Everybody I know who visits wants to go back. I've never met a person who went there and said, fuck Korea, never go in there again. Criticism is healthy and normal. Criticizing something doesn't mean you hate it or you're complaining. Now I'm no expert. I'm just a foreign girl who spent years living in Korea and I spent a lot of time going back. I spend time listening to people's stories and I've done some leisurely research. Please feel free to correct me in the comments and let me know what your opinion of this topic is. Like I said, I get a lot of messages from people saying, I'm a girl, what's it like being a woman in Korea? What's it like being a foreign woman in Korea? What should I expect? <laughs> and I hope this video helps. So thanks for watching. If you did, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Annyeong!